Richard, I'd love to start with you, if I course, may. Yeah. So I think what I'd love to know more about, I'm sure everybody was a little bit more about you, how you got to Purple Shoots, and then how you managed to get to Chris. Let's have your story to um, finding Chris Jackson. That would be fantastic. Oh gosh, that's a that's a horrifying thought. Finding <laughs> Chris I Jackson. I wasn't aware I was lost. Yeah. <laughs> um, gosh, uh, where to begin? Um, so I, I, yeah, I. Um, hi everyone. Uh, lovely to, to well, I can't meet you all, but um, to uh, to be in this. And um, I guess in my, my, my journey with um, Purple Shoots, it's it's been quite a, a long time in coming, I think. But I'm really glad to have found it. So I I was brought up in uh, Newcastle upon Tyne, which uh, interestingly is the same place as where a certain Chris Jackson was brought up. Uh, the difference being, um, I uh, went to private school and had my accent beaten out of me. Uh, not quite, but, um, you know, spending it with lots of posh boys. And uh, Chris, uh, Chris, he he held on to his roots. He held on to his heritage. No, that's a lie. I, I live in Newcastle. I'm actually back here now with my family. Um, and I moved to Sheffield in 2012 to study. And I, I studied law. And I realised within about two to three months that it was it wasn't a bad decision. It was just a, a not for me decision. But um, I found it a little bit interesting. So I was like, fine, I'll, I'll see it through. And uh, three years of, of playing a lot of hockey later and some occasional uh, studying mixed in. Um, I found myself a graduate in Sheffield. Um, now, uh, Sheffield, for those of you probably in the UK and, and actually probably around the world, uh, Sheffield is, is synonymous with industry, with um, making things. And the main thing that they're very, very, very synonymous with is uh, the steelworks um, and, and knives and cutlery. Um, and I found myself with my first uh, job working in a commercial role um, with uh, a machine knife manufacturing company. So um, imagine you've got a packet of crisps, um, we made the knives that cut the potatoes to then fry the crisps and then to seal the packets there afterwards. That was the full spectrum of what we did. Um, I moved from there to uh, work for a world famous organization called Sheffield Forge Masters. And, and there I was working in the uh, offshore sales division. So I was um, I was I was selling stuff first of all into the oil and gas sector. Um, to put it into a bit of context, uh, one component that we were selling was 150 tons, the size of your average living room, and there was that was one of four of them. Um, that's the sort of scale that we were working with there. Um, and I loved those jobs. I, I loved being part of something which had heritage, which uh, you could be proud of. But um, I found myself sort of uh, lacking, if you like, the, 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 a, a big sense that had been sort of rooted into me um and that was that i, I wanted to, to be able to help people uh i had a desire to get out there and to, to share what gifts i had and and you know, there's not many but there are one or two things that i can bring um and and share those with other people and um it was very fortunate because during lockdown i uh, i'd come across well not come across that's a, the wrong way to put it i'd um I'd sort of been put in touch with Purple Shoots. Um, now, my best mate, Owen, uh, his his mum is uh, the CEO of Purple Shoots. So that, that's Karen Davis. And Karen set up Purple Shoots 10 years ago. And, and the reason she set it up was, well, first of all, because um, having worked in the finance sector herself, um, she found that she was having to reject loads and loads of really, really good business loan applications for people to start up a business or to grow a business uh, based on someone's credit score, uh, based on something which uh, I, I personally I'll say is an archaic system and uh, leaves people limited and held back by things which might have happened 10 years ago, but is just haunting them. Uh, Purple Shoots was formed because basically we wanted to fill that gap. We wanted to give people a chance, a choice to say, actually, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to set up this business. I want it to grow into something that, you know, I can contribute uh, to my community, to my society, gosh, even to the government, you know, paying taxes. And I, I sort of said during the lockdown, well, um, in COVID, I'm a bit bored at the minute. You know, I couldn't just go out for a few pints with the hockey boys like I used to be able to. So I got in touch with Karen and said, um, would you be interested in me doing some voluntary stuff? Um, 
I started writing a um, social responsibility, uh, social, not, um, social return on uh, investment document, which turns out is an absolute nightmare. Um, didn't get very far, but I, I got to explore uh, just how good um, the mission of Purple Pursuits was. And so back end of 2021, um, we got chatting about potentially setting up something new and exciting. Um, the offering of microfinance for business startup loans, it wasn't just something that was what would be applicable, would work in South Wales. It's something that actually, or, or the whole of Wales, I suppose it was by then, it's actually something the whole of the UK, let's be honest, the whole world needs an opportunity for those who would otherwise not get it to really spread their wings, to, to grow and to, to build a, a business. Um, often self-employment is a really great uh, opportunity, a great tool uh, for people who are in certain circumstances, be it sort of childcare or, or disability, and we want to help that. And so right at the start of 2022, we we based we set up a, a Purple Shoot South Yorkshire. Um, we thought, well, right, we'll we'll start small. Um, we'll start in a in a in an area which actually has a very similar demographic to where our headquarters is, because um, South Wales again very much and um, sort of synonymous with steel industry and coal mining, very similar to South Yorkshire. What then happened is that, well, <laughs> reputation grew. Um, we started getting inquiries from all around the country, and um, one place was Lincolnshire. And um, we, we sort of partnered with an organization called Crosby uh, Transformations, and they're based uh, in Scunthorpe. And um, a chap there, um, put, he, he sort of put two and two together for me and Chris, if you like. And he said, actually, I think you'd be interested in, in chatting to this person, Chris Jackson. He, he's working for a university at the minute. I thought, oh, not so sure about not so sure about these lecturers, but actually they're all right, they're fine, they're, they're great. Um, but um, yeah, we, we kind of just got chatting really and and it, we were very aligned. I think Chris had, um, well, you know, you can talk about yourself, Chris, I, I couldn't possibly uh, tell the, the, your story for you because it's, it's too bonkers, to be honest. Um, but uh, you had this entrepreneurial mindset and you saw the work that, that Purple Shoot's doing as, as being of real value. Um, and so, you know, you've you've come in. We, we we sort of partnered with you first of all as a on a bit of a retainer basis, but more recently we've appointed you as our director of entrepreneurship. And uh, as it says on the tin, really, you know, your responsibility is 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 helping to grow the vision and the mission of Purple Shoots and and um, bringing sort of entrepreneurial mindsets and entrepreneurial opportunities with that. Um, and we've had a load of fun doing it. Um, alongside the microfinance, we, we do these groups called self-reliant groups. And um, they are essentially, um, they're for those who are wanting a fresh start, who really are keen to do it, but maybe setting up a business is something that they themselves would be a bit scared of to begin with, um, something that's a bit alien. And um, what our brilliant self-reliant group coordinators and, and managers does is that they bring together a group of people in, in a setting, in a neutral setting, often um, could be doing um, like a, an arts crafts course, or it could be doing woodworking, or we've got community allotments, those sort of things. And um, we bring those groups together and um, we then sort of encourage them into sort of a, a micro enterprise, if you like, and they, they save money together. That's a big pillar of it. But ultimately, we want these groups to be able to form an enterprise. And um, since you've come in, we've, we've been playing with kind of how that all works. We've been having a load of <laughs> fun speaking with the rest of the team, finding out what, what, what they want as well. And yeah, we're kind of in this position now where after 10 years of what has been quite organic growth, uh, you know, sort of taking opportunities as they come and, and saying yeah let's do it we're now thinking right what is our strategic vision and um, so Chris has kind of come on board with that and um I can't remember what the question was you said that I was going to babble not babble but go <laughs> off on a tangent and I have them uh, but that is where Purple Shoots is at the minute um, we found Chris in a in a lovely little coffee cafe very good coffee there by the way it's uh, the Crosby Collective if anyone ever needs it um found ourselves meeting there and and we've been sort of um, having some fun ever since, if you like. Richard, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. What a route you've had. So you've had quite from a law background to going through very much a commercial background and then realising actually you wanted to help people more. There was this sort of alignment of your values mm. 
And those Please. values, I think, are very similar to Chris's values. And this is, you know, where you found that that synergy in what you're wanting to do. And I would have to say, um, for those as well who are, who are here today, those, those team worker and resource investigator behaviours are coming through loud and clear. And it, it's just wonderful to hear, actually, because I think you're seeing not that you want to help, but you're looking for opportunities to help, which um, is, is that wonderful combination yeah. there. So, Chris, Richard's been introduced to you. You've been working with Purple Shoots. Now, you're also a Belbin accredited practitioner. You've been using Belbin um, for many years. In a nutshell, what, what did you see as the potential? Because obviously Purple Shoots are doing some brilliant things and they're already doing them incredibly well. Because if they weren't, they wouldn't have been expanding over the last 10 years. If they weren't already linking good at what they were doing, they wouldn't, you wouldn't have met. So Absolutely. what was the situation and, and what did you feel that they needed to take them onto the next step, perhaps? Well, it, it would be lovely to have a crystal ball and be able to predict these things, but that's not the way the world works. So as I got to know Richard and got to know the rest of the team and began to embrace the vision, which was we've grown organically within Wales over 10 years now we want to move out to the rest of the UK. Really exciting story, really exciting offer, lots of opportunities. And I, I, I just began to think, as Richard said before, we need a strategy to take us forwards. And you can't just switch that on. You've got to work at it. And it's not about, we, you know, we don't have the capacity to run out and hire a load of new people but it's also not fair to ask existing people to operate in areas that they're not comfortable in. So I began to think, well, what have we got? What, what vehicle can we use to move forwards? What do we need to do it? And Joe, you said before, you know, you can use Belbin to make a prediction. Yes, you can, when you know what you've got to play with. But I didn't even know what we had to play with. So I introduced Richard to the, the idea of Belbin. You know, what do you think of this? Oh, this looks interesting. So we used Belbin as a way of finding out what was really going on because everything seemed to be perfect and it's 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 not bad. You know, it's it it it, sel it, it, it seldom is. Um, you know, Belbin is not Belbin in itself is not a, a tonic or a panacea to fix things. What it does is it is that it enables you to begin to build some insight. And I thought it would be really interesting, having used this for years in outside industry, um, organisations, education, I'd never used it with a social enterprise, a charity. And I thought, I wonder what's going on here. Because just as Purple Shoots was, social enterprises and charities are often set up to serve a social need. They're not... They're not there to serve um, shareholders, they're there to serve stakeholders, and the, the value that they add isn't necessarily financial. So I think that there's a different mindset there, but at the end of the day, as they grow, if they want to grow, they then have to, um, they have to satisfy invest investors as well as, uh, as their clients. So they've got to change the mindset in a way and start and think, systemically start and think organizationally and become a functioning organization so let, let's use belvin and have a look and I'll, i'm just going to try and break everything here and share my screen and i hope this works okay yep. so perfect this is the question that I posed them. And I said, so how do we embody what we do in a meaningful way that explains our philosophy, vision, and values? In other words, how can we explain to people why we do what we do? And I thought that in order to do this, it's, Belvin's great at starting conversations, but we need a bigger, we need, we need to embrace bigger picture stuff. So I'm sure that most people will be um, will be familiar with the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. Now the SDGs came about around about it was in 2015, and the goal at the time was to get these implemented and get the world basically organisations, governments, 
embracing these and acting on them by 2030. And just over a year ago, about 18 months, possibly two years ago now, people began to realise that it's a big ask and that actually, as 2030 rapidly approaches, we weren't getting all that far. So this instigated what are known as the Inner Development Goals, or IDGs, of which, instead of there being 17, there are five. And I just love these because they're easy to grasp and they are what I would call human-centric. They begin with the person. So starting with the person, you work through a process of thinking, relating, collaborating, but then the purpose of them is to drive change sustainable change and I thought for a social enterprise this is absolutely perfect and this isn't something that we will apply to our clients it's something that before we do that we're going to apply it to ourselves so what do we know about ourselves and these are the the same same um IDGs just broken down at the board so a little bit more so goal one is being relationship to self thinking, cognitive skills, relating, caring for others in the world, um, collaboration skills, and then acting to drive change. And that's going to be done with courage, creativity, optimism, and perseverance. So what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Here's a good starting point. So we introduced the full team to Belvin. And at the same time, I also floated Patrick Lencioni's um, dysfunctions out there and just said, look, do you see any of this in the team? You know, is there ever inattention to results? Is there ever avoidance of accountability? Do you ever see lack of commitment? Is there fear of conflict? Is there absence of trust? And just left that floating there. So we, we all did Belvin team profiles, and this is a snapshot of the Purple Shoot CRM, which has been well anonymized, but it's just to give an overview of where the Belbin team roles lie within Purple Shoots. And straight away, if you just glance at that, you'll see that there's a predominance of green, which in this case equates to the team worker role. Now, this is absolutely perfect for an organization who deals socially, who needs to encourage groups of people to come together, who needs to be, um, who need to be empathetic, who need to work together externally as well as internally. But one of the, one of the possible drawbacks of having so many team worker roles, and this is what interested me, how is this going to impact us moving forwards? Because with the team worker role, although it's a very collaborative role, there's also a side to it, which can mean that nobody wants to have a difficult discussion or nobody wants to take, um, make a, a difficult decision. It's all about keeping people happy. So this is where I'll just stop the screen share. This was our starting point. And we went back to the team and said, hey, look at this, just as you did with the team wheel uh, behind you there, Joe. Where are we? And we had a look. And then we started to consider the team roles because what you have isn't all you've got. We've all got a little bit of everything inside of us. It's just our propensity. It's our natural. It's, it's the roles that come to us naturally are the ones that come to the fore. So, as per your chart there, for me, it's um, plant resource investigator and shaper. Only I've switched the shaper off this afternoon, apparently. <laughs> so th this was about, right, guys, if we're going to move forwards, if we're going to do this, we've now got to think, we've got to look at ourselves and start to think, do we ever, you know, do we ever avoid conflict? Do we ever avoid making difficult decisions? Because there is absolutely no doubt about it. If Purple Shoots are going to become a national organization, and who knows, tomorrow the world, it's not just going to happen overnight. It's not necessarily going to be easy. 
we are going to have to push ourselves outside of comfort zones. And in order to do that, what are the skills and attributes are there within the team that can be brought to the fore, that can be exercised? And I, I think in letting everybody see that what you have or what, what bubbles to the surface, what comes to the surface isn't necessarily all you've got, I hope that's been quite liberating for them. Well, let's let's ask. So, just a a, a, a few questions or a few pointers here. Is one seeing all of that teamwork? It does. You'd expect to see that. You'd expect to see in a social enterprise. You would expect to see a high teamwork of culture because that's why you're there. Similar, the NHS has a very high teamwork of culture. Again, you're there not for this, not for the flash cars and the exotic holidays. You're there because you care. Um, that, that's what motivates you. So you would expect to see very high team worker. But of course, that's looking at it collectively and all of us bring something to that team worker culture, which is more than just the team worker, isn't it? So it's all about, I suppose, to start with the individual understanding what they're bringing and also how they perhaps could change that for the, for the future, but not losing what they've already got. It's about adapting and understanding, isn't it? What I'd be really interested in, um, Richard, is you, first of all, you completed the self-perception inventory. And then I, I believe Chris, quite rightly, asked you to get observers from other people because with Belvin, we're observing our behaviour. We're not saying who we are. We're saying, what, what do we do? What, what do other people see? What do they value? So you get feedback from other people and you get this wonderful report, or not wonderful, depending on which way you want to look at it, um, depending on looking where you see your strengths, but also where other people see your strengths. And sometimes there's a difference. How did that feel for you? Um, <clears throat> to, be, to be fair, it was, it was, it was quite an interesting um, process. So my, 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 you know, you can see from the, 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 the wheel up there, if you like, that my, my, my top three are team worker, um, resource investigator, and uh, plants. Um, and to be fair, so in my self perception, I suppose, um, certainly I, I had myself as much of a, a higher resource investigator and planter, and then um, equally high, but not quite as high, a team worker. But it's, it's the perception from my observers that actually have pushed team worker to be my top role, which is very interesting. Um, and I think it's what it's suggesting is that uh, at Purple Shoots, we have built what I think is a, a wonderful environment whereby we do pull together as a team remarkably well, um, where there is a, a lot of agreement, there's a lot of consensus and that, it's probably something it's obviously something that I didn't quite grasp actually I didn't I quite, I didn't quite see um and then you know in fairness I, I kind of am ranked sort of quite highly by my observers as a resource investigator and as a planter and that I imagine has come from the fact that when we set up in South Yorkshire um there had to be an, a remarkable amount of um resource investigation because effectively this really weird alien concept was being planted in the middle of, well, in the middle of England um, from Cardiff. It's not as if we're next door neighbours. Um, and so we had to work really hard to plant that, to investigate the resources, to make that happen. And, um, but what I think is most interesting is, is that, yeah, we've kind of said actually um, in my, my own sort of um observer perceptions and my own self-assessment I'm a very social person mm. um and and I've been reflecting on this quite a lot lately because I was a, a, in South Yorkshire by myself for quite a long time <laughs> and one of the one of the things that the the report says is uh you should probably not work alone and I was there like hmm <laughs> and, and and I was reflecting on it's probably why I I then and you know, my, my wife is very supportive of this, it's, it's especially with a, a four-month-old baby. Um, I spend a lot of time um, doing stuff with the hockey club as well. Uh, I'm the club secretary, and 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 that is a, I spend a lot of time with them. And it's the, that was it was quite it was very it's very apt essentially that um, I, I wanted to be around people. Um, now this is probably why Chris and I have hit it off so well in terms of 
uh, the number of conversations we have in the way that we, we talk to one another and, and the sort of the, the rapport that we've built up because I think I was looking for someone to I think Chris would say mentor, I'd probably say the same, but someone locally to really get behind the vision and push us on. And so actually when we were doing this, it really kind of, it basically made everything aligned for me that this is why it's worked out. Yeah. What was really fascinating as well, just to kind of go flip side is, is I had myself as quite a high shaper. Um, yeah. Personally, I think shaper, looking at my my perception, it was one of the, it was not the highest, but certainly, certainly a lot higher than what my observers um, said of me. Um, and that was quite interesting because I, I thought, OK, maybe maybe I have been shaping a lot. But actually, the observers say, actually, nah, maybe not. You know, you mean you know, more of a, of a team worker type role. And that's quite interesting. And, you know, I think actually a few of our team members found that as well. Um, but then interestingly, I don't think I'm a very good coordinator. But then all my observers think I am a very good coordinator, or at least, you know, <laughs> I think it's up there. So uh, what this has done is, is actually it's actually made sense of a lot of things that, that have sort of in the way that we've developed and the way that the role has come about. It, it makes a lot of sense of actually how they've happened um, and how we have built this great uh, teamwork uh, ethos, which is just it, it underpins what we do, I think. Doesn't it just? It does underpin my job. I said it was great to see it, but it's very interesting, isn't it? How somehow how we think we're coming across isn't always how we are. Um, I think it's really interesting. I mean, we haven't got time to go into it, but the difference as well between the shaper and the team worker, which are also opposites when it comes to team roles. Sometimes you expect to see some differences between those similar team roles. But those are quite different, aren't they? So there's a lot there. And I think this links with, Chris, doesn't it? That first of those IDGs, self. And we think it's really easy to tick a box and fill in a form and, oh, this is us. It's not, is it? We need to be able to feel open to get feedback from others so that it's a true self. It's an authentic self, would you not say? I mean, did other people, Chris, have the same sort of, you're alluding to it, Richard, that other people had, again, those differences between self and observers? Um, it, it's difficult to comment without bringing personalities in, which wouldn't be no, fair. Please don't. No names, but, thank you. Uh, but, but yes, you know, a similar conversation has happened. And it was interesting what Richard said about he thought of himself as a high shaper. And I always think that it's it's difficult for the shape of preference to come through if you're working in isolation. Yes. And I think since Richard joined the company, he's been... Um, in, in, in setting up the base in Sheffield, he's been working as a bit of a satellite to the others. So although they've spoken, he hasn't been there to work with them. But he has been doing an awful lot of, as he said, practically resource investigating and also coordinating. And I've noticed um, with my own profile and with other people, because normally if I, um, if I start to work with a different team, I'll do my profile again with them. And it's interesting to get what they see superficially at first hand without having worked for them for any time. And I find that my third rule can fluctuate. Mm. The resource and plant, the, the resource, resource investigator plant haven't changed for years. I'm sorry, <laughs> what you see is what you get, that's it. <laughs> but number three can. And when I was working more at the university and doing um, doing formal research, Number three became specialist because nearly everybody I spoke to, we were talking about particular fields, you know, particular academic fields or particular academic studies or such and such a theory, fascinating stuff. But that was, they were the conversations that we had and there was no need for the shape of role to be there. But whenever, you know, if I've been running my own businesses or when I've been working um, with some sort of let's say steerage function <laughs> somewhere else, that does tend to come back through. So it's, in, it's interesting how you can exercise what you need. And this is part, isn't it, of this capacity building? Yeah. Because what you're not doing, you're not starting saying, like, this is it, job done, thank you very much. This is what we have, it's, it's static. With the capacity building, you're talking about what is it that we need to be and how to each of us understanding ourselves a little bit better 
Well, you tell me what the capacity building is. I, I this, this is your story. Well, I, I, I think capacity building is an interesting concept. <clears throat> And the best definition I've come across for capacity building actually comes from the United Nations. And they talk, they talk about agency. So there's some good language being used here. But I think when, in general, when people talk about capacity building, it's all oh, right, well, well, we'll send you on a training course, you know, and then you will be trained and you will learn and your capacity will be increased. And that's not so. And what the United Nations look for in capacity building or say what what they say sorry what they say evidences capacity building is a change in thought and a change in action so it's not just amassing knowledge it's not just stuff it's the ability to be able to think differently and the the ability to be able to act differently so if we're working with communities <clears throat> especially where the, the self-reliant groups come in, what we're looking to do is to create societal agency. So in other words, they become responsible for themselves, less reliant on, um, on handouts, less reliant on the state, more self-determined in their, in their outlook. And the way in which we curate that is by helping them to think differently and also to act differently, which is exactly what where the, um, the inner development goals come in. We start with a person, we help them build self-awareness, presence, open mindset, so open and learning mindset, and then lead them through this journey where they can then decide for themselves what it is they need to do in order to make a difference. And you're doing that yourselves within Purple Shoot. So before you're even working with the um, self-determined groups, you're also applying this to the Purple Shoots team as is because you want to try and help as many of these groups as possible to have that to have that agency, don't you? So um, Belvin's not the answer in itself, is it? What else do you need to do? I mean, the, 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 it starts a conversation, it paints a picture. But as all of you know, I feel quite strongly about the fact that you don't say I've done Belvin tick, my team's now high performing. Um, it's something that you have to keep looking at and keep developing. And I'm going to use one of your quotes, Chris, if I may. It's your team and life. You're in perpetual beta, aren't you? Um, you are constantly evolving, you're constantly trying and you're constantly learning. Yeah, yeah and I think that just introduce another acronym here we're told that we live in a VUCA world you know volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous and, and so it is and it gets more complex by the day and unless we are prepared to learn then it's very easy to get stuck in a rut and everything everything's going wrong we blame everybody else but really what we need to do is change the way that we think and act in order to address the complex situation that we find ourselves in. And this is where you're absolutely right what you said before, Joan, and I share your frustration. Um, you know, a lot of people, oh, let's do Belbin. Um, yes, and in order to what? And Belbin is the start of a journey. And that journey should be one of self and mutual learning within an organization. Belbin is a great tool at any level to, um, to start the powerful conversations that you need in order to take you on that journey. Because if, you're, if your mindset's fixed, and I, I believe you can have a corporate mindset or a collective mindset as well, so it's not entirely down to the individual, but if your corporate mindset is fixed and you're not learning, if you're not learning as an organization, then sooner or later, somebody's going to sail straight past you or the wall's going to cave in and you're not going to be ready to cope with it. Okay. I, I, you, you know that you know, we're in complete agreement. So what we've got at Purple Shoes, Richard, you've got this wonderful team with a really high team worker culture, mm. which is what you're expecting. But change and learning needs to ha happen to make sure that you can fulfill what it is that you need to fulfill. 
So what do you see your next steps now that you, you've got now this picture, haven't you? You've got this wonderful picture of the individuals and the contributions they are making behaviourally to the organisation. Hmm. What, what do you think the next steps might be? What, what, what's the next plan to leave it as it is or to use this information? Um, yeah, no, so the plan is very much to use the information. So I, I think what this has, has really done is, so this year we're, we're celebrating our, our 10th birthday and you know what we've achieved in 10 years has been fantastic. It's been wonderful. You know, we've, we're really changing um, landscapes, um, you know, and that is something to be uh, applauded. And essentially the, the question that um, has been certainly in the back of, well, not in the back of my mind, quite, quite frankly, at the front of my mind is, well, where next? Where's the growth? Now, to be honest, actually, some of it is a lot easier than others. Um, the, 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 the microfinance that we do, you know, when we went to South Yorkshire, we, we kind of, we changed our marketing ever so slightly and we just saw a, a colossal increase in inquiries from all over the country to the point where having gone from South, moved to South Yorkshire, we then, we've done a loan in Glasgow and in Torquay. So we've, we've covered the whole, nearly the whole length of the British Isles there. Um, that's come absolutely fine, but it we can't just sort of take the microfinance and say, right, that's it. We'll just let that become, you know, what go everywhere and not worry about everything else because that would be, it wouldn't be proper of us. It wouldn't be right. Um, and so what we've, what we're doing is we're planning our, our growth strategy, if you like. So, um, we started out we, we did a we did a classic SWOT analysis uh, strengths weaknesses opportunities threats and we did this about um, a month and a half ago um, just to get the ball rolling and then we kind of using that have come up with um, sort of ten points which yeah, I could I could take us through them but but it'll take me forever so so I won't but um, I'll share, we'll, we'll we'll be sharing them um, at some point um, and um, essentially we've come up with these plans but. In order to make sure that um, we, we got the input from the team, we then shared those points, those plans with uh, the rest of the team. We had a team day about two weeks ago, whereby we could um, capture what the team thought as well about that. And so, you know, we had our, our ideas, but then we said, look, let's, what do you guys think? Where are your ideas? Because we, as, as a very much a team working organization, we recognize uh, the, the merit of bringing sort of that thinking aspect to um, the to what we do, and so that's kind of where we're at at the minute, and we're in this quite fun little stage now of consolidating uh, what the team have brought with what the overall vision is to eventually share what our plan is. But certainly in the pipeline, there's going to be um, lots more thought about how we can commercialize the aspects of what we do, uh, because we're very conscious that. Um, you know, as a as a as a social enterprise, you know, we can be somewhat dependent on grant money, on money which which is given to us for free, but it's always not very sustainable that. And we're looking at means of creating sustainability so that we can then grow our offering, send it elsewhere. And what's wonderful is that with these team worker roles, with the Belbin roles, um, not with team worker, with the Belbin profiles, we can, if we see particular opportunities beginning to form, beginning to grow, we've got this wonderful spectrum of team workers, but also other strength individuals who we can quite hope, well, hopefully sort of say, actually, this has got your name written all over it. Would you like to take that forward for us? And that's something that I'm really excited about because it'll mean that we can appropriate the correct resource. We can just take the vision forwards. And it means that instead of just saying, oh, look, here's the vision, right off you go, we can be very purposeful in actually doing it. And so that's what we've kind of used the, the team worker kind of, the, not, again, I'm saying team worker too much, the Belvin profiles uh, for um, to, to, to help us in that, to help uh, push us in that direction and basically hold us accountable and make us do it. And, and that's really exciting. That's, there's this really buoyant atmosphere at the minute of, right, we're, we're on the precipice here and we're going to go for it and it's going to be good. Um, so, yeah, there's lots, lots, lots happening. Um, you know, I'd say watch this space in about three months time because we'll be able to share what our overall vision is. It's going to be it's going to be good. And, and ultimately, 
as we come back to it, it's going to be about serving and helping as many people as, as we can possibly find, because that's our mission. That's what we want to do. We want to empower individuals. Richard, I wish everybody would come on to our webinars and speak so passionately about what it is that they do, because I just I can I can just feel the energy coming from mm -hmm. here. And I love the fact that you are beginning to use the language that you're using, you're learning more, you're holding people accountable, you're getting the right people in the right roles. And also, I don't know if it may be, it may be an idea at some point in the future to see how much people can flex and look mm -hmm. at those manageable roles to see if you can fill in some of those gaps and look at that as development opportunity within the team without having to look outside it. Absolutely, yeah. No, I think, and I think that's the real, that's the real wonder of it as well. And I think, it, what will be very interesting, and, and we sort of chatted about this is, um, and it was actually one of our, our team members asked the question, could we could we do this again in a year's time, you know, or in eight, 18 months time and and see what what has there been any change? You know, has have there been, you know, has a has a shaper emerged, um, perhaps um, the elusive shaper? Uh, <laughs> um, you know and maybe they haven't but it would be quite an interesting exercise because now that we're conscious of this I do think it's bringing out the best in people and um, I really do I think it's being used by the team really well and and actually it was really lovely so 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 we started our last team day with an exercise that you you shared in one of your last webinars which was take two minutes explain to your partner what your what your what you bring to this team from your Belbin profile and then your partner spends one minute saying actually yeah I see this and here's what you've missed <laughs> uh, here's the other good stuff that you've missed and we did that and I mean it set the tone for the rest of the day because it was like well, well first of all it was communication it was great um, but also um, it got people to really um, see the value that they bring to the dynamic and what they bring and, and how they can really um, contribute in that way so that was it was a wonderful way to start the day so, so thank you for that little nugget <laughs> anytime which this is what these webinars are for I love what you say there now we are conscious and that's yeah. what it is isn't it is that some of us just 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 sleepwalk through, through through life and everything but what you're saying is now that we're conscious of what we can bring we see the value in what we can bring and the value it's bringing to the organization as a whole that's powerful stuff. Absolutely, yeah. It really is. Chris, would you like to, to, to close this for us? Would you like to give us your thoughts? Because you've been working closely with them in a slightly different capacity. Where do you see the future to go? Yeah, very interesting. Because in line with all of this, um, Karen, who's a CEO, has been quite adamant that she didn't want to create a hierarchical company with departments and managers and so alongside introducing the team rules we're, we've looked at the concept of actively building a team company or a holoc a, a, an holacracy a hol holocratic company where the the different disciplines if you like work at a very flat level where there are a, a, a team who complement each other with a team leader, but there's overlap between these areas. And the the, the key to, um, yeah, one of the key things to operating a successful team company or team organization is communication. And I think this is what we're, we're learning at the moment because yeah, we're, we're making mistakes, it's not perfect. But in making the mistakes, nobody's getting um, hold over the coals for it. It's right. What went wrong there? Let's let's reflect on that. Okay, what if we do this now? What does it look like? So the an, another purpose to using Belbin is as organisations are almost evolving or devolving, becoming flatter and um, responsibilities being devolved, Belbin is a great way to help the different, the different circles or teams understand not only themselves, but each other and see what's going on throughout the company. From, from small beginnings in Wales mm. to you joining them, Richard, and bringing this passion that you have 
combined with Chris, Chris's vision, I strongly believe in for the team now to be conscious of what it is that they need to do, what capacity they need to build to allow these social enterprises to build their own capacity, to make a difference to people at the grassroots level. Hmm. It's an incredible story. It's an incredible journey. And I would just like to say, please do do this again in a year's time, because we would all very much, I'm sure, like to know where it does go to, but expect those Melbourne team roles to change. And I am also going to tell Meredith, um, who, who was in earlier, um, that you're looking to build a team organisation, because my goodness, that is, that is what he would love. That's what he thinks. It's not just about one team. It's about an organisation full of high performing, learning, growing, developing teams. Thank you both so very much for that. It's been a very, very quick um, 53 minutes. Um, has anybody got anything that they would like to ask Richard and Chris um, whilst we're, we're here? I know Gary's saying, actually, it may be worth doing a bit sooner. Mm. Perhaps in six or nine months might be worth. It depends how rapid the change is, isn't it? And also, it depends how much you're able to implement some of that change. Because sometimes we can talk and that change still happens a little bit slowly. It will all depend on you, I suppose, Richard. I know. I think, you know, to be fair, six, nine months is not a bad shout either. Uh, I think it's for us to sort of review where we're at and and um, how the implementation of the vision is going, you know, and and sort of and sort of how that, that dynamic has changed as a result. So it's something to bear in mind, Gary. Uh, good, good suggestion. Yeah, fantastic. What also comes to mind here is the fact that Belbin is applicable not just with corporates, but also at some social enterprise level. I think for me, this is why I wanted to, to get you on hearing your story from Chris, is this is where we also need to be concentrating. One would argue where it, it really, really does matter and where the impact um, can be seen. So good luck for the future. I am Cute. sure it will be bright, it will be purple, um, and we will start seeing the, the story of purple shoots whenever, whenever we go onto LinkedIn and the like. So, Richard, yeah. thank you so much for joining You're us. You're welcome. Chris, thank you. Thank you so much, as always, for your feedback, your wisdom, and the ways in which you continue to um, use Belbin with all different types of organisations and teams. Thank you all very, very much for joining us. Um, we will be sending out the recording as soon as it has been edited. And please do go back again. I think there was some great stuff there as well about the IDGs. There's some mm. real, there was so much, so much information there. Perhaps, Chris, you'll join me again soon and we can perhaps do a webinar just on the, the, the IDGs. That might be quite an interesting one. That could be fun. Thank you. That could be fun. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much, everybody, and hopefully see you all again soon. Many thanks. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thank you.